All right, guys, in this video, I want to define what exactly an edge is. Like people always use that term, you know, they, they use the term edge generally to describe whatever they're doing in the market. You know, everybody claims to have an edge. You, you very rarely meet people who don't think they have an edge. Um, so everybody, you know, it's this term that everybody uses. Everybody believes that they have. Um, but in reality, we know it's very elusive. Um, we know most traders, you know, are not successful. The overwhelming majority are not successful and lose money. Um, so it's kind of in direct contradiction to what we know to be true. Of course, you know, some people may have an edge and for whatever reason, not be able to execute on it, not actually be able to make the trades based on that edge. And that's an entirely different problem. But, uh, you know, some people are in that stage. Uh, you know, that that is one of the uh, things the distinguishing factors between people who are successful and people who aren't. But, you know, then you also have people who think they have an edge, but they really don't have an edge. You know, I mean, it's not even an, an issue of execution. It's just that, you know, they, they actually have a negative expectancy. Right. And, and in a lot of ways that can be worse than, than, uh, than just like totally losing money. Because if you have a, a negative expectancy and good risk management, you'll lose money, but you'll lose money very slowly over time, like very, very slowly. And that can be even more painful than just losing money quickly because it erodes away at your, uh, the narrative you have a, a, about yourself as a pro profitable trader over a long period of time and sort of delays that, that uh, development process. But, you know, going back to like what an edge is, well, I think an edge is essentially Sometimes it's easier to define something by talking about what it's not. And then whatever is left is what, you know, essentially what, what it is. And for me, you know, anytime somebody uses uh, very definite terms to try to define what an edge is, like if, if they, if they are analyzing the market and they're, they use terms like something will happen or something should happen or something won't happen, right? Any terms that imply certainty, or a, a high degree of expectation are a good sign that people aren't thinking in, in probabilities and they probably, they may have an edge, but they probably don't know how to apply that edge if they're saying things like that, right? Because if you do have an edge and, you know, as a lot of people will tell you, you know, it's, it's much smaller than probably give it credit for, you know, it's a very slight thing. Um, and I would define it as some, you know, an edge is just simply at its basic level, just the probability of one thing happening over another. And it's a very slight probability. And it's so slight that it, it, it can't, it, it's not enough to base an individual expectation on. So if you apply that edge to one scenario, you're just not going to get, there's no, there's no basis to form any expectation about what will happen based on that edge, right? It's too slight to do that you have to cast it over a series of trades, you know, uh, probably a longer series than you would think, right? Like maybe 20, 30, all the way to hundred. Uh, of course, you know, it'll start to reveal itself before then, but the idea is that, you know, it takes a certain amount of time for uh, not only time, not necessarily time, but iterations, trade, different trade setups and executions for that slight edge to, you know, yield the profitable results that, that it can. Um, and, you know, for me, I, I definitely spent a lot of time in my trading development thinking I had an edge, but I really, I really didn't have an edge or I didn't at least have a consistent edge. Um, so probably didn't have an edge during that period. So, you know, it's one of those situations and one of the difficult traps you can fall into is, one of the, you know, sometimes people end up trading without an edge, right? Because they don't have any clearly defined uh, system to take trades. And what ends up happening in that, in that scenario is they, you know, their opinion becomes their edge and they don't really have a rigid system to define what an entry looks like or what an exit looks like. So they formulate an opinion and then they just use whatever, you know, is in the chart that, you know, verifies the opinion that they've already established. And that's a really dangerous position to be in because the opinion is totally governed by your emotions, right? So you, you almost always form an opinion that is, 
contrary to the possibilities that exist in the market. So you're forming, if you're trading your opinion, you're forming a negative ex- expectancy. And uh, over time, you will lose money. You will lose money. That's almost a guarantee. So, you know, uh, but again, an, an edge is different for everybody. You know, I come across a lot of different people who are successful and even guys who maybe aren't successful yet, but have, you know, a very clearly defined edge. And, and uh, you know, it's always different for everybody. It sort of is tailored to their own individual uh, proclivities and personality. And, you know, you just can't take a cookie cutter approach and apply it to something that works for one person uh, to something that works for somebody else. So really an edge should be rooted in the personality, I believe. And it should be a reflection of, you know, somebody's unique observations of the market. In other words, you know, you can draw on what other people's insights are and incorporate that, but you might want to incorporate that at the higher levels, meaning like the upper levels, not necessarily the foundation of your edge. I think whatever the foundation is, you know, some of those core principles, especially as they relate to the statistical probabilities within the edge. Those should be rooted in your own observations, your own personality traits, and your own unique uh, proclivity, you know, for trading and what kind of, you know, are you a position trader? Are you a scalper? Are you a, uh, you know, uh, a intraday volatility trader, uh, which is similar to a scalper as well. But, you know, people have to define that. Uh, But, you know, on the flip side, if once you do have an edge and once you do have that clearly defined and, uh, you know, verifiable, uh, profitability over the market, then like you need to hold on to that, like with dear life, right? No matter what anybody says, no matter what anybody tells you, what their opinion is of, of what, whatever that is, that is the uh, golden ticket. So if you have that golden ticket, don't sell it. Don't let anybody, even look at it. Well, let them look at it, but don't let them change it. And if you do have that golden ticket, you know, you want to, you want to cultivate it, you know, like you would plant a seed in the garden. You want to nurture it over time, feed it, give it sunlight, let it grow. And, uh, you know, over time and you let it, you know, of course, give it time to play out. But over time that, that, that seed will sprout and, uh, the, that, favorable profitability, that edge that you have will, uh, manifest itself and it will manifest itself in a way over time that incorporates, you know, the law of compounding interest and it'll start to, you'll start to get returns that don't, um, you know, don't, aren't, aren't corollary to the risk that you're, you're, uh, putting onto a trade. So you can have, you know, over time, right. This is of course over a long period of time with compounding interest, you can have a system that uses very little risk, right? And, uh, you know, maybe less than a fraction of percent per trade. And, and then you can have returns on an account that just don't, that doesn't make sense how they line up with that small risk utilization. But it's just the, the uh, law of compounding interest, really. I mean, I've seen it in uh, certain people's accounts I've been following and And in my own account during periods, you know, where it was very successful and yeah, it's, it's one of those things where, uh, you know, it, it can be a little bit amazing if you, uh, if you take a step back and look at it, but, you know, at the end of the day, there's, there's a lot of different opinions out there in the market and none of them matter. The only thing that does matter is that statistical edge that maybe you have, maybe you don't, maybe you're on the verge of cultivating it. But again, if once you find it, just run with it and uh, build a system around it. And, uh, you know, you can share it with other people, but they probably won't be able to implement it. You know, it's, it's one of those things that's just kind of, part of who you are and, and, and really part of the way you see the world, essentially the way you see the markets. Um, now, I guess, you know, the point of this video is 
kind of to get to the core definition about what an edge is and to kind of lay out the case again for what it isn't. And I think, you know, you can't, you can't be said to have an edge if you're constantly trading with a different approach or a different methodology. And obviously that, you know, that this is something that's pretty obvious, but it needs to be said because um, people do it all the time, right? People out there interacting with the market generally for the overwhelming percentage are interacting with the market in a random fashion. They have no rhyme or reason for what they're doing. They have no um, really strategy at all. Um, or if they do have a strategy, it's totally, you know, off in the wind and subject to change. So I guess, you know, maybe you're looking at some of the content we upload to the channel. Maybe you're finding things you like. Maybe you, uh, you know, are finding things you don't like or, or maybe you like everything, right? But the idea is that, you know, don't, don't let it impact your, you know, whatever your core set of uh, principles are too much, right? Kind of just incorporate on the upper level. And, uh, you know, and also uh, another thing to keep in mind is that when you have like a, a group scenario of traders, you can get into a situation where, you know, different traders are encouraging one another in, in their trades. And, you know, you, you don't want to let that social dynamic influence your trading, right? If, if uh, somebody you think is a great trader posts a trade idea that is directly contrary to your idea, you know, they're, depending on your opinion of them, you may, you may, uh, you may, you know, take the trade or not take the trade and whatever influence that has either positive or negative is, is noise entering the system, you know, or if, you know, on the other hand, people tell you that you're, you know, you have a great trade and then you add a risk to, to a trade that would break your risk parameters and, of course, it's just, uh, you know, of course we need, we need to be avail ourselves to the information that's out there, but once we have a certain amount of information, you know, it, it can be a little bit overwhelming on census. Um, anyway, uh, just a quick video, uh, might, might be a part of this, uh, psychology series, but you know, if you like this type of content, you know, just make sure to, uh, like the video and subscribe to the channel and, uh, Stay tuned for more uploads to the uh, psychology series and also uh, more uploads. I'll be uploading uh, another update to the uh, Bitcoin trading journal series. So keep an eye out for that and uh, catch you guys in the next one.